So we're going to bend this lead upward. And since we can get at it easiest right now, I am going to go ahead and solder this connection. And we'll let the solder completely fill that winding. See how that, that fills up? That should be a very good solder joint. It's not beaded. It's completely filled the metal. And that, now we won't have to worry about trying to get down in there to solder that once the coil is in place. The next part to add is the coil for the low pass section for the woofer. And as you can see in the, the one that I've already constructed, I did just right, right there, right next to the coil, and we have a very short connection right there. So coil is going to set right here, very close. And as you see, conveniently, these two wires are close together. So I'm going to trim off the long lead of the coil right here. Now, this red coating on the coil wire is insulation, and you can see the end of this wire. Uh, it has been tinned, so it has a silver appearance, um, but we cannot solder to this insulation. So what I'll use is, um, this time I'll use a carton cutter, and I'm just going to scrape away that insulation. And what you'll see, of course, right underneath it is bright, clean, shiny copper. We've got to get all of that off there so we have plenty of clean, clear copper to solder to. We'll glue this guy down right in front, glue the coil down. Okay, and those two guys are together. I'll go ahead and bend this lead over. And with the help of some pliers to save my fingers, we'll wrap this guy around here. And what we can do after we solder this, we can bend this down to get it, get it out of the way, keep things nice and neat. Okay, so, this is our input terminal. We have a solder connection back here on the back, which, which we'll make later. I went ahead and soldered the one on the front here because it's kind of tight quarters down in there. Connected to the input side of the coil. This is our output side to the speaker. So the next part is the parallel um, capacitors. And I have positioned those right next to the coil and these guys are also in parallel that means they're hooked end to end just like the um, the two 500s before since I have a connection up high here and a connection down low here I wrap these guys so the lead is on the top here and the lead is on the bottom there none of this is critical um, just I you know try to do things neatly um, so it's the same thing again Looking ahead, since one of these is up high, the other is down low, I'm going to use the upper lead on this side, so I'm going to bring the lower lead up and twist it around here. And I'm going to use the lower lead over here because it's down on the surface of the board. So I'll just bend that down and wrap that guy around there. And we'll go ahead and trim those guys off because they're not going to go anywhere. Again, there's, there's no polarities in any of these parts, so it doesn't matter which way you turn them, which way you hook them together, they're, they're non-polarized. So our cap is going to, we're going to park this guy right here. Our electrical connection is right here. So again, we need to clear away our insulation off of this wire so we can solder to it. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it into place, just a spot of hot melt glue on the board, a little bit on the side of the capacitors, and we'll just park it right there. And that grabs pretty quickly. And we'll go ahead and wrap our lead around the coil lead. Okay, now this lead, I'm gonna bend this down. This is our output, so I'm gonna bend this down and get it in place there, and I'm going to anchor that to the board. 
to help strain relief it because over time we don't want weight of the hookup wire or anything pulling on that. So we'll just go ahead and anchor that guy right there. Alrighty, um, at this point we're better than halfway done with our crossover. Input capacitors, coil, capacitor. Two input caps are in, are in parallel, wired in series with the coil. So just you can just follow this on your uh, on the positive side of this filter that they are just in line. The final two capacitors are in parallel uh, with the speaker load, so they're hooked between the output side of the coil and ground. So to I'm going to go ahead and hook up the two capacitors, and they just go around the little spot there that I bared on the ground wire that runs down the center of the board. And I'll just wrap that guy around right there. So that is the entire low pass section for the two woofers of the aviatrix system. The, um, the high pass section incorporates uh, an attenuation network on it for what is called baffle step compensation. And uh, we won't go into a discussion on what that is, but for uh, a couple different ways that you might use the aviatrix speakers, uh, there is some variation in the caps that, or the resistors that you would want to use for this circuit. So the um, most common setup would be using the white sand block um, ceramic power resistor and one of the uh, one of the brown resistors, they might be different or very little bit in the way they look in the kit that you receive. One will be 10 ohm and one will be 12 and a half. And the most common setup would be to use two, one or the 12 and a half and the 10 in parallel, which is the way we'll set it up here. The baffle step needs for the way you use your speakers may be different. So uh, it's a good thing, obviously, to think ahead how you're going to use your system, whether it's going to be the MLTL or uh, just a center channel or whatever. That's going to determine whether or not, again, that you use the two big filter caps at the input and these. Uh, attenuation transistors or baffle step compensation network. So to put these guys in, again they go in parallel. Click the link in the description for the next part of Eric's assembly.